And as we uh, give ourselves to walk in the light, as he is in the light, we will experience that impelling of the spirit to fellowship one with another. The Holy Spirit knows the need in the body of believers in the fellowship of the saints. The Holy Spirit knows the realm of spiritual relationship among the brethren or the body of believers. And if we are sensitive to that Holy Spirit, you know, we would be able to uh, perceive and know and live accordingly in the body. Yes. Remember one thing, the, the injury of spiritual fellowship is something that the enemy wants to uh, bring about in the fellowship or in the body. That is the devil's stroke to injure that expression of life. The Holy Spirit is able to perceive and he will help us if we are sensitive in our lives. And that's why, brothers and sisters, we have to be so concerned about this life more than anything else as far as this call is concerned. I can testify to this and I think I sincerely thank God for the fellowship of the saints when you are having a terrible time, when I have been going through such trying times in my life, time that the enemy has been pressing me out of measure. It's not that you are in God's work, you are a preacher, you are in the ministry, the enemy says, okay, let him go. Rather, the pressures on such people are much more. The pressures could be very, very powerful upon your life. And it is in such times that you really look for a time of fellowship with the saints. And 
And when you are in the gathering of the saints, what an emancipation that brings about in your spiritual man. I have experienced that time and again in my life. What a renewal it brings about in your inner man. You feel that you are pressed out of measure in many ways. Many, many, many things the enemy is out and lies and criticism and so many, many things. You know, you go through such persecution, you know, being slain by words of men. You see that a time of fellowship with the brethren, it brings a renewal in our lives. It brings about a great emancipation in your inner man. The life rises up again. Whereas you thought, Lord, you know, it looks like it's so difficult to continue on this way. It is not a matter of self-pity. But these battles are real because you are in the work of the Lord. You are standing for something that relates to the heart of God. And you see that you are pressed out of measure in many, many ways. I've been through many such situations. Times so discouraged, Lord, how can I go for this meeting? What will I do there? I tell this to God's people in Delhi. I said, most of you have a choice. On Sunday, you come to the church, you have a choice. If you don't want to sing, you don't have to sing. You don't want to pray, you don't have to pray. Oh, sharing testimony. Sharing, sharing the testimony once in three years. So where is the question of testifying? That does not arise. So you have a choice. But here the whole week, you are tossed about. You are pressed down. Pressed out of measure. There is hardly anything called life still in you. And then comes a Sunday and you think, Lord, what am I going to do there? What will I share? What is the word? I have no courage to stand up before God's people, but I have no choice. You have no choice. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing? You are a people of great choice. 
You can get up and go. I cannot go. It's not good to be people of choice. It's good to realize we have no choices in life. It's good to know that in Christ we have no choice. That's where we feel and sense the gravity of your binding with Christ and His purpose. That's where death works in the depths of your being. There you have no choice. You have no choice to be offended. You have no choice to be angry. You have no choice to show what you want to show to others. Amen. There are depths in Christ. And I can tell you, God will take you there. Saints, this calling is not all glamorous. But it's full of glory. <laughs> that glory that comes by the way of the cross. But certainly it is not glamorous. There's no choice here. But I thank God for the fellowship of the saints. And you thought that life is almost quenched. Such reproaches, such lies, such kind of reactions among people. All because of what you stand for. All because you declare something and you want to pursue that at any cost. You know when you speak about this, this great truth of life, you are found yourself in a place of helplessness. What did the people say when the Lord was on the cross? You saved yourself. You saved many, but now save yourself. Helplessness. Why don't you? Why is your thing like this? No answer. You have no answer. You have no choice. But give yourself to the master. Walk this way. Tight lipped. Cannot open your mouth. Cannot answer people. But I want to tell you. Where death worketh. Life also. That life. Is the life that overcometh death. I want to encourage the saints of God. That strength I could get. In the company of saints. I am ever grateful to the saints of God with whom I am growing in this life and in this relationship. I am ever grateful. And I know my safety and security is in the fellowship of the saints. I 
And so I want to say, dear brothers and sisters, here in our is our responsibility. We are not here pursuing after some some imaginary doctrine in God's word. We are not pursuing after and chasing after some kind of teaching. Some kind of teaching which is just imaginary and mystical in God's word. Listen carefully. Here is our responsibility. Responsibility as ones who need the valued fellowship in our own lives. Many a time we may sense that we need the values of fellowship in our own lives. And we may ignore the responsibility we ought to have in giving into others the values of fellowship. To give it unto them, to provide for others. <clears throat> Not only our need for it, but also in giving it to others. <coughs> Both these responsibilities we ought to shoulder in these days.